<laughs> Roy may be one of the nation's favourite foodies, but he's not here to talk about that tonight. He's yeah. on the show with the story yeah. of the first single he owned and how it shaped music into the other great passion of his life. In 1965, I became the proud owner of the first single I ever bought, and it was All Day and All of the Night by The Kinks. I was born and brought up in Boston, Massachusetts, a place that's had a very intense relationship with England, and it is the birthplace of the American Revolution. The music that was coming to us from England, probably around 1963-64, totally changed everything we thought about England, and it went from being the old country to being the new country, a place that was just full of exciting, innovative ideas. This incredible explosion of amazing British groups who were rather rough and tough. And of course, for me, the group that just totally shook me up had to be the Kinks. It was as if a bunch of wild animals had just been let out of a cage. I mean, the ferocity and the energy was quite astonishing. The sound of the guitars on the Kinks singles was just thrilling. We were all desperate to sound like that. You Really Got Me was so revolutionary that I couldn't wait to hear what the Kinks were going to do after that. And of course, they came up with an even better single, which is All Day and All of the Night. I'm not content to be with you in the daytime. This is a perfect single. It's very, very simple, you know, the structure of it is, it's just, it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, chorus, ending. Yet, the most important thing about it is that more than any other recording, it absolutely sums up youthful aggression, energy, angst, you know, all sorts of things that led to the creation of hard rock, heavy metal, all those forms of music. They all have their birth here and I could listen to this every day. I came to Britain in 1974 and, you know, of course, one of the things that was very attractive about London was its incredible music scene, the fact that it was a really cool city. And then I suppose, like, like everyone else, I was both sort of shocked and electrified by the punk movement. The British punks put energy and amateurism back into, into music. Well, I got a band together, which uh, we gave the splendid name of Jet Bronx and the Forbidden. And we recorded a couple of singles. But you can come by in the morning, I ain't doing nothing. But we split up fairly early on. And then I just got kind of sidetracked in journalism and in television. My musical um, ambitions and interests were put on hold for quite a few decades. I ain't doing nothing, you know. I don't get around at all. About two and a half years ago, I got an email from a sort of uh, unknown to me punk enthusiast who was very interested in my old band. And he said, why don't you come and play this big punk festival? And we said, oh, why not? And suddenly, after a break of 30 years, I found myself in a band and playing again. And to actually get up on stage in front of an audience and realize that we could, uh, we could do it, it was kind of fabulous. It was really great. When you listen to The Kinks, you realize that anything is possible. It just gets you going. <laughs> 